Hello and welcome to the Iaconian Archives. I am the Archivist, your host and reader. In this episode, I will be sharing an excerpt from Remember That Night by author Metanoiak, a tale from the IDW G1 reboot which explains why you shouldn't drink too much. This story could also be considered the unintentional sequel to Couples Night by author Neverlarge, an excerpt of which I have also featured here on the Iaconian Archives. So pour yourself a glass of Swerve's Worst, get comfortable at your console or in your berth, close your optics, and let's enter the archives. Whirl watches Brainstorm's less than linear approach out of his peripheral vision. The scientist drops down in the chair opposite him with less grace than intended. He's overcharged, Whirl knows that much, which makes it all the more entertaining. He focuses his vision on the mech opposite him. Brainstorm has his elbows on the table and is leaning in, supporting his helm on shaky servos. The fact that he's without his mask speaks volumes about his intoxication. Whirl for once praises being without a mouth, internally grinning at Brainstorm's predicament. He tunes out the background noise and listens to the scientist talk. I really like you, Brainstorm says. The clarity in his voice is surprising, but Whirl vaguely recalls the scientist working on something that nullifies the effects of high grade. Well, at least it's partially functional. Oh, you do, Whirl presses. The nice thing to do is stop this before it gets chaotic, of course. There's just one tiny detail. Whirl thrives in chaos. He leans in to scrutinizing Brainstorm under his watchful optic. He doesn't miss how Brainstorm's cheeks dust a light purple, entirely unrelated to his overcharged state. What do you like about me? Easy, Brainstorm proclaims with a surge of confidence. He makes a grand gesture that requires him to lift an arm, very nearly knocking him off his balance entirely. By some miracle, he manages, jabbing a digit at Whirl. Your collar. Collar's nice. My shh brainstorm shoves his servo in Whirl's optic, obscuring his vision. Regardless of whether or not he obliges, Brainstorm continues. It, it brings out your optic, nice and yellow, very striking, and, uh, your pinchers are strong. Unique, uniquely yours. Like it when you grab me around my waist, so strong. Brainstorm sighs dreamily, dreamily. Whirl spark skips a beat. Brainstorm isn't finished. Given his profession as a scientist, Whirl believes he'll be spared the embarrassment of emotional compliments. But no. All reservations are thrown out of the metaphorical window, and Whirl's current predicament is less than the aftermath of Brainstorm's indulgent, and more his growing embarrassment. You're destructive. I like that in Max, Brainstorm says. His servo has dropped to lay on the table again, giving Whirl an eyeful of the intensity he stared at with. There's desire there, too, and love, so much love, He's forced to avert his gaze. Ugh. He makes an attempt, that is to say. Brainstorm's servos clamp around his optic casing and keep him frozen in place. His voice lowers to a purr. Oh no. Unpredictable, too. There's not a boring day with you. But you know what? Underneath all that, uh... Brainstorm trails off. His optic ridges knit together, creasing in a frown. Relief briefly washes over Whirl, but is soon replaced with cold dread. Someone from the bar shouts, Take your time! And Whirl dearly wishes he'd have used his hollow avatar so he could flip them the bird. Brainstorm is sufficiently encouraged to continue. He's now holding one of Whirl's pincers quite tenderly, stroking over the smooth metal. Whirl shivers at the contact. I think you're pretty neat. You're soft under all that. Yeah, you care. He's smiling, goofily. There's an allure in that, but Whirl is preoccupied with his own thoughts, trying to astral project himself out of the situation. Brain. Brainy. That's enough, he stammers, 
Whirl isn't used to such genuine admissions of love and adoration, even from the Mac that has openly admitted to loving him before. It's different, he reasons with himself. It's different because they're in public. Sure, he likes to laugh at Cyclonus when it's tailgate inflicting this sort of thing on him, or Ratchet when it's drift. But him? That sucks all the fun out of it. He might even start gah, sympathizing with his comrades. Brainstorm gives him a puzzled look. He pulls back his servos, awkwardly fidgeting at his sides. He looks dejected, and it makes Whirl feel guilty. Why? he asks, shifting in his seat. Do you not, you know, Brainstorm gestures between the two of them, like me, like that? Whirl blanches. Brainstorm, he begins in hushed tones, as if it isn't already public knowledge. We're a thing. Oh? Mm-hmm. Oh. The scientist giggles. He's laughing, a minute in, utterly hysterical, coolant running down his optics. Before Whirl can get in a word, he promptly collapses on the table and passes out. You can find this story posted in its entirety at archiveofourown.org, along with nearly 40,000 original Transformers transformative works. Give it a read and let the author know what you thought. Comments and kudos encourage authors to keep producing their art. Please subscribe to this channel and you'll know when new videos are posted. As always, comments and suggestions are welcome below. If you would like to suggest a story or a selection from a longer fanfic for reading here on the Iaconian Archives, please view our video from the Archivist suggesting content, and you could hear me read some of your favorite Transformers fanfiction. From tonight's author and myself, thank you for your time and support.